Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Plus channel. Mike Catalana with a special guest this week back with us. Ross Tucker, player in the NFL, broadcaster, podcaster all over the place, and a guy who played for the two teams that will meet in the playoffs on Saturday, the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills. Welcome back, Ross. Mike, thank you so much for having me, man. It is my pleasure. And uh, as I like to say, I'm coming home. I, I'll, I'll be in the booth Saturday night for Westwood One for the Bills and Patriots. Should be awesome. And I'm glad I'm in the booth and not on the sideline like Steve Tasker because yeah. that is going to be rough that night. I played in some cold games, but uh, they're making it seem like it's going to be super duper cold. So it should be interesting. You know, that's going to be a factor. I don't care what anybody says. It's not as much of a factor as wind is first, precipitation is second, but cold is a factor. I mean, I can remember, Mike, you know, the ball gets so hard. The ball gets so hard and, like, bigger. Like, I can remember <laughs> it was harder to grip when I was playing center in Buffalo when it got super cold. So it's a factor. It's different. Now I'm going to guess that the top, the coldest game you played in, and it's in the top 10 of coldest bills games, 2004 at the Bengals. It's listed as one of the 10. It, I think it was like 18 degrees when the kickoff started and then it got colder, but that was a windy day too. What do you remember from that game? Coldest game I think I ever played. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it was the coldest game I ever played. I remember running out on the field before the game, like I always used to for like before pregame warm-ups. And Chad Johnson saw me. I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts. And Chad Johnson said, hey, buddy, you're going to cold. And I was like, I'm good, man. Um, it's funny, by the way, Mike. I mean... Back then, I guess I was 24 years old and weighed 315, so maybe that's the difference, but I could never do that now, man. I mean, with every year I get older, I get colder. I don't know what the deal is, but there's no question. Um, I do remember being very cold. I remember they had a good team, too. Uh, you know, at that point, our record was probably 7-6, and six, I want to say. Uh, then we beat them to go eight and six and we beat the Niners maybe to go nine and six and we lost to the Steelers yeah. in a game that people bring that up week 17 week 18 every year people bring up that game oh well remember when they lost to their backups it's a lot it, you know at least they were 14 and one you know what I mean like people act like they were terrible and by the way their backups were like Willie Parker and James Harrison right. their backups were awesome I'll never forget though Mike I don't remember that game Oh, yeah. We were beating their starters. Yep. When their starters were in, we had the lead. It was crazy. Anyway, um, the Bengals game, I remember being super cold. I remember Takeo Spikes had a touchdown against his former team in Cincinnati, which was awesome. And I remember after the game, everybody just could not wait to get into the shower. <laughs> and it stung. It stung your skin. You know, like the skin that had been exposed the whole game. It stung when you took a hot shower. Were there guys that you played with that just could not perform in that kind of weather or just where it got into their head so much that it just made it difficult for them? I mean, nobody, nobody likes it. I mean, come on, who would like that kind of weather? But were there guys that it was just that bad for them? I don't remember that. I don't remember thinking – this guy's not playing as well, or this guy can't play when the temperature's like that. You know, I have yeah. to go back and watch that game, but I think Lee Evans played well, Molds. I mean, usually it would be like the receivers, right? Yeah. It'd be th those kind of guys, but I don't think so. You know, Bledsoe <laughs> was fine with it. Obviously, the O-line was. Um, you know, I don't think anybody the defense, we were so good on defense that year that I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, I, I see that I feel like, at like the high school level, um, I don't really see as much in college. The high school level, there's certain teams, they get deep in the playoffs. It's really cold. They get behind by a touchdown. It's over. <laughs> it's over, man. But no, I don't really remember that yeah. in the NFL as much. Well, you know, it's funny that um, Josh Allen was talking this week, and he was pretty honest yesterday. He said, 
I don't like it. He goes, my, my feet get so numb. I can't feel my toes and I don't like it. So naturally what's everybody saying in Buffalo, build the dome man for Josh Allen, (laughs) make it a dome in the new stadium. Okay. You played for the bills. You're a Northeast guy. What's your thoughts on, uh, I don't think they're going to do it, but what's your thoughts on a dome in Buffalo? Um, not a big fan. No, no. I mean, I, I understand it, but that just doesn't feel like Buffalo to me. I'm really not even a big fan of them having domes in Minnesota or Detroit right. or Indianapolis. Like, I totally get it, but I think what makes football special is that we play outside and that we play in the elements. And I think that that's one of the things that makes it cool when there's snow or whatever. I, I think that that adds to the intrigue adds to the factors in play. I know there's people that think every game should be in a dome, you know, with the perfect field conditions. I I, I understand that argument. I just don't believe in it. Some of my favorite moments. I remember a game as a junior in high school. We played and it rained the whole game and we wore all white uniforms. They were all brown by the end, but we kicked their butt. And it's fun to play in the mud and the muck. And I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just old school, but... I I enjoy the elements when it comes to football. Bills and Patriots not only meeting for the third time this year, three times in the last 40 days. The way the schedule went, it was December 6th, December 26th, and now here we are in the second week in January, and they're playing again. What do you think it's like? Start with the players themselves. I just asked Dion about this. Like, on the line, you know, it's just that battle every play. Third time. Same offensive and defensive line. What do you think that's like just coming back against that same team in such a big game? Yeah, I mean, the one thing I would tell you is I'm not really a fan of it. I'm not glad that that's who the Bills are playing. Uh, I'd rather see them play somebody else. You know what I mean? I'd rather see some variety, you know, have the Bills be playing one of the other teams, whether it's the Steelers or the Bengals, whoever, right? Just I'd rather see them play somebody different. I know they played the Steelers all the way back uh, in week one, but um, it is interesting though, because every game is a unique entity unto itself. People don't realize that, but what makes football so unique is you have that full week to prepare for it. So you come up with a whole plan based on what you've seen from that team really recently and what you're going to change. And The tactics and scheme are so – I mean, just think about the two matchups they had so far this year already. I mean, they couldn't have been more different, right? I mean, they were totally different games. And I think this third one will be a totally different game as well because you've got the cold, but you don't have the wind. But it still creates a unique situation. Um, I think that New England will probably try to get back to running it a lot. You know, I know Josh Allen doesn't like the cold. There's no chance Mac Jones likes the cold. Right. I mean, he's from Florida, went to Bama. I don't envision him being happy that this game is going to be the weather that it's going to be. So, uh, but I do think that New England will try to run it, try to play keep away. Um, you know, the last game, Mike, Josh Allen, he was unbelievable. Last game against New England. I mean, it he couldn't have played better. Makes me a little bit nervous. You know, he had to play really, really well. And he's going to have to do that again, I think. Um, look, you, you played this game at the highest level. I just have watched it. When I watch you guys play through the years and watching these teams, people always talk about momentum, like week to week momentum. And I just don't see it because each game is so different. I don't mean you don't have confidence going into the next week, but I'm saying it, it, you're playing a, it's almost like a, not a different sport, but such a different game. I mean, if they scored 50 against the Jets last week, what does that matter when they go against Belichick and the Patriots this week? Am I way off on that? I think that there's a psychological element to when things are going well. I don't know how much of a factor that is, but you know, we referenced the 2004 season. We won six games in a row, and there's just sort of a, an aura, a feeling of confidence that – we thought we were as good as anybody. You know, in the NFL, you win two or three in a row, you're feeling pretty good. You win six in a row, you think you're the best team around. And I do think 
there's some value in that, in, in having that confidence, right? Guys, confident players play better than if you're not quite as sure of what you're doing. Now, to your point, the new tactics, the new game script, everything that go, it, it, it does make each one of them a unique entity unto themselves. But I do think there is some type of psychological carryover, yeah. What do you think of the McDermott Belichick dynamic? And I say that because you played for Belichick. You were around him. You've seen certainly Sean McDermott and the way he operates. That level of respect, but at the same time, you know, Belichick's that guy. He beat McDermott in a Super Bowl with the Eagles. He had beaten him when he started his career. He hears all the time that Belichick's the greatest of all time. What do you think that dynamic is at least – not like a lack of respect. Certainly they have high respect, but just the way McDermott maybe really thinks about going up against the goat of coaches. Well, the first thing I would tell you is based on what I've seen, I think McDermott is a lot more like Belichick than people realize, <laughs> you know, McDermott's pretty, uh, pretty tight when it comes to information and, and those type of things and is super careful uh, wasn't there one year where he like yelled at Belichick's kid or something in the in the end zone? Uh, you know, yes. I don't know what they were doing, but they were out um, there late during the warmups and they weren't supposed to be out there. And he chased him down and got him off the field. Yeah, he uh, he's got some Belichick to him. For sure. He's he's fiery. I mean, Sean McDermott's a Philly kid that was a wrestler. That's all you need to know, right? I mean, he's got that feistiness to him. I do like the fact that there's no back down from him, right? I didn't love after the loss when he said, don't make this a Belichick thing. That made it seem like he was a little bit, you know, self-conscious about it. But I do like that he embraces the challenge and he's not backing down at all. I love it. What do you expect to see uh, Saturday? So let's, you know, both we've had these three games. The one, the weather was such an important factor. It'll be big in this one, but it's not supposed to be as windy. What would you expect to see between these two teams Saturday night? Yeah, I think it's a close game. I think it's a lower scoring game. Um, you know, for people that are so inclined, you know, I, I like the under in the game. I think the weather will be a factor. And I think, that the Patriots will try to play keep away. I think they'll try to win the line of scrimmage. You know, the Bills defense has been playing so well, especially rushing the passer. I don't think that Bill Belichick wants to put Mac Jones in that situation to drop back a lot, you know, interceptions, strip sacks, those type of things. I think it'll look actually pretty similar to the first matchup. The win won't be as much of a factor clearly, but I do think it'll be more similar to that matchup. Then the second one, I think it's like a 20 to 17 game, something like that. Uh, ultimately, I like the Bills. I just, I think Josh Allen, quite frankly, is a significant amount better than Mac Jones at this stage and maybe always will be. You know, that's something that the Patriots are going to have to kind of sort out. I think Mac Jones is a good quarterback, but I don't think he's ever going to be Josh Allen. And so they're going to have to try to find a different way to win these games because yeah. they're not going to have the better of the quarterback matchup. Um, and getting the lead in these games. I mean, New England got it quick in that first game in Orchard Park, and it seemed like the Bills just were always a step behind, and then New England just kept running it because they were stopping the Bills' offense. How big of a factor do you think that is uh, if the Bills can jump out in front like they did in Foxborough? Yeah, huge, because – the way I think the Patriots want to play this game, they really don't want to play from behind. They really don't want to have to throw the ball or feel like they need to score in a hurry. I think the Patriots, in, in the Patriots' mind, the lower scoring game, the better. The more they just possess the ball, the better. I think they're going to try to play keep away. So I think whoever gets the lead, I think that is significant, especially if you get like a two-score lead. Now, the, the Bills can come back from that. I can't envision the Patriots coming back from a two-score deficit. And the last thing for me, in terms of pressure, uh, maybe on the whole organization. I mean, the Bills were in the AFC Championship. The Patriots were down. They've got a rookie quarterback. They've already split the two games. I, I think the pressure's immense on the Bills to get a win in this one. They can't go out to the Patriots, losing two out of three and two at home and ending this season, right? Totally agree. 
Yeah, it's, it's another reason why I don't love the matchup for the Bills. I think that there is a significant amount of pressure on them. Patriots are kind of playing with house money. You know, people didn't expect them to be here, et cetera. The Bills are the ones that have Super Bowl aspirations, and now they got to beat a team they just played, you know, three times in 40 days, and they just beat a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's going to be something to see. So you'll be there doing the game for Westwood One, one of your many jobs. You can follow Ross on Ross Tucker NFL and your podcast. You've got a lot of podcasts, a real successful network. Tell everybody about it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. It's been awesome. Uh, I do the Ross Tucker football podcast every day. So if you want 30 minutes or less from a former bill on everything going on in the NFL, just listen or watch the Ross Tucker football podcast on YouTube or listen anywhere you find podcasts. I have a fantasy podcast, a betting podcast that a lot of people like called the Even Money podcast, a college NFL draft podcast. So they're all at RossTucker.com or wherever podcasts are found, but your best bet it's probably just to follow me on social media at Ross Tucker NFL. That way you can see what the press box food is in <laughs> Buffalo Saturday night and get my thoughts on everything going on. Yeah, it's it's not been strong this year. I got to say, I've been following. You and I were in Kansas City last year. They come up with the barbecue, but Buffalo's taking a notch down during this pandemic Ooh. thing. They got to step it back up. Maybe it'll be a different for the broadcast booth. Oh, and the other thing is DraftKings is one of our sponsors now for our podcast. I think I opted in on a bet that you were helping me out with the other day. Yes, yes. They, I had a uh, I had a boost there with DraftKings. That's awesome. Yeah. I love DraftKings. Yeah, DraftKings has been good. Well, we're looking forward to it, looking forward to the game. You and I, the veteran move. See what's going on outside. Head to the press box. That's where, that's where it is with zero degree weather. Uh, that's what we got to do on Saturday night, right? Absolutely, Mike. All right. Looking forward to it. Again, make sure you check out Ross on social media, Ross Tucker NFL, and all of his podcasts. Thanks for all of you for being with us, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Buffalo Plus.